Jason Manns and three quarters of Loudon Fight Club. Well, two, two quarters. Um, two quarters. What? Two quarters. Oh my God. Hey! Oh my God, there's people here. What's up? DC, what's happening? <laughs> Who's the first timer? Come on. Oh, quite a few. Lots of quite repeat. a few. Lots of repeat offenders in the room. Love that. I, I like somebody who doesn't learn their lesson. <laughs> Because you were late. Because I'm a risk taker. You were late. I'm a risk taker. You I'm still get into cars with me, which is, uh, listen, that means you really don't we learn. We have to road together since the incident. <laughs> That's true. Listen, I Maybe think you did learn your lesson. This, this is the wrong city to talk about an assassination attempt in. <laughs> but he tried to kill me by a finger. I did. And Wait, it's not that you very strange. <laughs> but it's not what these six twisted people think. It's like I poked you to death. Uh, no, uh, uh, I did, some of you may know this, I don't know, but I did, um, I tried to remove Matt's finger, uh, with, a, with a car door, <laughs> unfortunately. And, and didn't know he did it. No. I thought it was his fault. I was like, dude, how do you slam your own finger in your own door? Like, that's silly. Do you know what, how that feels to the victim? Did to say that? I didn't find out until he got back from the hospital, honestly, that it was my fault. <laughs> and when I first told him that it was his fault, he didn't hear me because he was face deep in a banana creme brulee. Oh, uh, so good. It was so good. Um, but yeah, I did, um, you know, I had to, now he does not mess with me. So yeah. that's the uh, byproduct of or, this whole thing. Or ride Ubers with you. It's or ride Ubers with you. I have to just dip my toe back into the Uber with you. The good thing about me finding out later, though, is I had a completely guilt-free day, so that was nice. uh, I had to enjoy that banana creme brulee, uh, free of any sort of uh, guilt. It was nice. And while you were free of guilt and I was suffering, you in your mind thought, my dumb friend smashed his finger in What a dummy! Door. What a dummy! Man, but, can you believe? How good is this banana creme brulee? But, man, what a dummy, man. So, I'm over there with a throbbing pointer finger with ten stitches in it, half glued together, going, I did not do this to myself. <laughs> I didn't get out of the car and go, hey, I got an idea. No! It, to me, that is exactly what happened, though. That is what I witnessed. That's not how it happened. But we'll start with some questions, maybe. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Should we start over here? Hello. Hi, friend. Hi. Um, so, really quick, I apologize to everyone in the no apologies. Not. Ask for forgiveness, not permission. Oh, so, there we right? go. Um, so my question is, think back into the Rolodex of your brains of all the roles that you played. Which one do you think would be funniest if it was if you did not play the role it was instead played by Danny DeVito? <laughs> Are you kidding? Every single role should have been played by Danny DeVito. Ever played. Nothing I've done in my career is as good as the worst thing he's done in his career. <laughs> sure. He would have been a great Aaron Bass, honestly. I can definitely see him as a Nazi killing. Or, yeah. John Winchester, bro. <laughs> Oh man, uh, I don't know. Wait, what show is Wishing So, 
So it was from uh, the Bones. Did you ever watch Bones? Um, so what'd you say? Like, how would I, how would I hide a body? Yeah. Well, I can't tell you that because then everybody will know it's me one day when I eventually go mad. Yes. What did you do? What'd you do? I just went. You just. <laughs> He would marry me just a finger out of the sweat. <laughs> like that injury. You know, you know, a funny story about Bones. Um, Bones was actually the second time I worked with Caesar Milan, the dog whisperer. Uh, oddly enough, and both times he played himself. And they, uh, so for those of you who don't know, on Bones I played, uh, I ended up being the bad guy, spoiler alert. Um, and I played this uh, guy who sipped dogs on people, right? That was my whole thing. So they hire the dog whisperer to try and track me down. And eventually they find me and they come to this barn and they open up the barn door and I'm there with my dogs and they're like, freeze! And I'm like, ah! Is that the guy that talks to dogs? <laughs> literally, literally, that's my line. And one of my dogs comes over to Caesar Milan and sits down next to him and he goes, yes. And this dog have taught me quite a lot. <laughs> and everyone on set busted out laughing. And they had to cut that line from the scene because it was too funny. <laughs> it was too funny. I'm mad at the show yes. for not leaving it in. And this dog have taught me quite a lot. And I just love that. <laughs> and I, just, just, I wish they had like done a flashback to a scene where he's literally, the dog's like, yeah, he did it. This guy did it. See him like in the, in the in the scene, and the dog's not doing what he wants, and he's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> poking him in the back, and he holds him on the neck. He's like, no, it's okay. <laughs> he holds him down. I also have a Caesar Milan story. Funny what? Enough. Yeah. So I was working at Entertainment Tonight. They sent me out. Caesar has this gigantic animal rescue up in uh, like north of LA, like 20 miles. They sent me out this 20 acre dog zoo. And I get out of the thing, and Caesar comes out. And the first thing you notice about Caesar is this man's teeth are his glorious smile. And he's like, hey, and you see him. And then you're like, there's a herd of animals walking behind him. Yeah. There's a llama, six cats, a fruit loop, a dog. There's just so many things. And he walks up, and they're like in a V triangle, and he's just like, Real calm, and you're like, hey, Caesar, how you doing? And you go, oh my god, and he goes, don't make eye contact. <laughs> and I'm in like a suit, and I'm like, what you? <laughs> Haven't you ever watched a show? Don't make eye contact, Jesus. I thought that was like reality tell, like that was no. a thing. No, hey, can't do that. He That's a threat. He like grabs you by the forearm and goes, you don't look into their eyes. Yeah. You walk with them. He's like, don't look into my eyes either. He goes, <laughs> Them, like they know they should follow you, and I'm like, how? What are they doing? Like, Stick your chest yeah. out. He goes like this. Yeah, that's right. That's right. That's so right. I was like, are you Jensen? Like, what's happening? And, and Caesar goes, if I was Jensen, it would look like this. <laughs> and that last part of that story is a complete lie. Laugh at you guys as a user right there. So that's what happened. Did we answer your question? <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. Hi, Chelsea. That's great. I'll answer again. Yeah, they'll, they'll take over again. I kind of wanted to know what was the response to cross up the cast when you started including them in your TikToks? Like the Were they kind of all for it, or were they like, I think in the first, when we did the first one, we were in Italy, or I think, and, and, and uh, it, you know, there was a little bit of convincing, because like, I think it was still, like, it was still in the early stages of, you know, TikTok and trends, and maybe every, it wasn't as ubiquitous as it is today, and so I kind of had to explain what a transition is, you know, like, oh, basically I'll be there, and then you'll be there. <laughs> and he's like, all right, I don't know. Uh, and so we did it, but then it just blew up, and, and the, you know, we were texting each other, like, how many views it had and stuff like that. So it, it was, 
um, I think there was some hesitation at first, and then since then it's been uh, just a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you. As Adam's non-official official publicist, have you guys all seen his blue cardigan character? Are we raise your hand if you're aware of it? Okay. They're like, yeah, we get it. Tell everybody. <laughs> it's the most Tell everyone. It's the most wholesome family comedy character that exists hey, today. Thanks, man. It really is so funny and so relatable. You guys have to check it out. I watch it with my nine-year-old. Like, you sit there and see I like that. I like that. He loves it. I like that. Um, hi. Hi. My name is Aja. So my question is, has anything supernatural ever happened to you guys, like outside of the show? <laughs> the only thing that comes to mind is when I was a kid, <clears throat> my and it kind of happened to my mom, not to me, but uh, I was probably nine years old, and my grandmother had passed a few years prior to that, uh, my mom's mom, and she had this ring that she wore uh, that her mother gave her, my grandmother gave her, and wore it every single day, rarely took it off, and she lost it all of a sudden. Didn't know where it was, she was devastated, it was like a big deal, she tore the house apart trying to find it, couldn't find it anywhere. She was separating the laundry and came to me while she was doing it and said, hey, it's so weird, I was separating the laundry and I had this strange feeling like I wanted to call my mom. And she was just sharing that with me. I don't even know why. I was nine years old. She's like, I just felt like I wanted to call your grandma. Um, and then like moved on with her day, goes to do the laundry, and she cleans out the lint in the laundry thing and finds the ring. Now that, now that doesn't sound that crazy, but the holes in the laundry machine, in the dryer, uh, we're tiny. There's no way a ring could have fit through there. And so it just felt like this weird, like my grandma put the ring in the limp catch and it was just like, I don't know. It was, that, that is the most supernatural thing that has happened because to this day, there is no explanation for how it got in there in the first place. Yeah, and, and I have a somewhat similar thing and I'm in the same boat where I'm like, I, I don't, understand so you just kind of let your beliefs go and do whatever it is and you kind of hope right like I kind of hope that my situation like where it was my grandpa it was him somehow you know whatever he passed away and I was in the hospital with him and he, we let him go he was with me and then I drove home my wife was in the car with me in Florida and I, I rented a car as I flew in I didn't have anything to drive it was a brand new like Cadillac four-door car brand new no miles on it and I'm driving home from the hospital after he passed like one in the morning with my wife and just a you know emotional mess and all the lights on the dashboard, you know, like everything's digital in these these new cars, so everything's illuminated and the radio's off. And then I don't you know this is somewhat grim, but if you've ever lost somebody, there's this kind of death breath that they take at the end where it slows and it's irregular, you feel it coming. I was in the car and I'm like a mile from my house and all the lights on the dashboard go off black. Speedometer, all those, all everything on the radio. And the two like colon dots, or I think it's what's called in between the time on the radio start blinking and you hear breath. And it literally is through the speakers what? you hear. <sighs> and then one lyric, swear to God on my life, strike me dead right now. The song goes, I hold my breath and I slip away. And then all the lights came right along with that. And I just lost. Like, oh, ah! oh, you never say goodbye. Like, it was, oh my God. And my wife, who very much has had several supernatural things happen to her, like, as much as her passed away grandpa sitting on the edge of her bed telling her a story in the middle of the night. And I woke up to her going like this, looking at him. Sitting, she's sitting on the bed to nobody, and she's had several of these experiences, and she was in the car with me, so I had, this, and I was like, tell me exactly what just happened, and it happened exactly as I explained it, and it was, was mind-blowing. Yeah. That was the only time ever in my life that I ever experienced something like that. Yeah. Way better than mine. But it was, <laughs> still to this day, I feel a little like... Did I mention the holes were really 
really small. They were tiny. Way bigger. I mean, the ring was way. Anyway. Thanks, AJ. Hello. I'm leaving this one to Matt because I am not well versed. Wait, which season I would be most likely to get back on? What, what's the exact question? Or like to just get transferred into? You as a person, as yourself, yep. you get transferred Universe. Okay. Which season, like, it's, you don't get to say it's not something you're choosing. Right. Like, I don't know what you choose that. But which season do you think you would stand the best chance of surviving? Oh, for As me, it's definitely, for definitely, it, it's season eight, Mike, the season that Aaron Bass is in because they're going around killing the Nazi zombies. And less Nazis mean I get to live. That's true. <laughs> That's true. That's a solid point. Um, I would say season one, so I could come onto the set and go, they cast you guys instead of me for this? What the hell? <laughs> like, I was so close, and this is now, they went obviously by height. You guys are like, oh, I didn't know. Now it's Twitter following, but then it was like, whoever's the tallest, and their knees should have worn platforms, man. Should have worn platforms. <sighs> uh, yeah, I had a I, I would have survived if I started in season one. In my eyes. Thank you. Hi, dear. Hi. Um, last night, my friend and I were debating about the best, like, dipping sauce, ranch versus blue cheese. Ooh, so, okay, like, now we're getting into some good territory here, guys. <laughs> this is my expertise. So, I wanted to know what you guys think is the ultimate dipping sauce. Mm. I mean, but are we are our choices only ranch or blue cheese, or? Oh, 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 other options. Other options. I would say, for me personally, if a sauce is orange, I'm in. <laughs> Anybody? Yes. If a sauce is orange, I am in. I don't care if it's sriracha mayo, if it's a little... Uh, that would be sriracha thousand, aioli. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> thousand Island or whatever. Like, if it's orange, I'm in. I love it. I recently created a new sauce. I'm going to share it with you guys today. You're welcome. I was at Whole Foods and I bought an overpriced bottle of hot sauce called Everything Bagel Hot Sauce. Oh, wow. Yeah. Right? Yeah. When you think about being like... I'm a really big fan of Everything I know. Hot Sauce. <laughs> I took that hot sauce home and I mixed it with equal parts mayonnaise and made an Everything Bagel aioli that was spicy. Mm. Now was Wait, are we saying that just because you mix something with mayonnaise it becomes an aioli? No, I'm saying it's an aioli because I'm like a chef. <laughs> you can't just call something an aioli all of a sudden. Aioli is different than mayonnaise. People have problems with mayonnaise for some reason. Raise Who are hand. these people? Raise your hand if you don't like mayonnaise. Out. Follow me. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Raise your hand if you'd be willing to try an everything bagel spicy aioli. Yeah. It's just mayonnaise, guys! We just learned it! He just said it! He's just calling it something like, different! Like, mayonnaise sounds like... <laughs> and aioli sounds like... Mmm. What? They should just call it mayoli. Should we, <laughs> that, should we create a new condiment and try and get some shelf space? Listen, we have to incorporate another part of the mayo. If you've ever been to Arby's, yeah. Arby's, they have horsey sauce and Arby's sauce, which is somewhat orange and somewhat like a sweet barbecue sauce, but where you mix, mix horsey sauce and Arby's sauce? Delicious. Wait, do you guys know why it's called Arby's? Roast beef! Because R.B. R. Roast beef! R.B. They don't know! You know, they don't know! Is that true? Yes! I'm not asking you, I'm asking this lady! She knows! Why is there an A on it? R.B.'s! You gotta spell out, you're spelling out the initials. You're spelling it out, you're sounding it out. R.B.'s. Maybe? The guy who loved roast beef, or the lady, 
name started with an A. What? Are you, oh. are you the Arby's founder? <laughs> you know what? This is Mrs. Arby! <laughs> the roast beef and cheddar. Is it Velveeta or is it real cheese? Not Velveeta. Not Velveeta. This is so judgmental. <laughs> Velveeta and aioli sandwiches. Dude, it's mayoli. Anyway, do, I don't even remember the question. Do we answer? Do we answer? All right, great. Thank you. I was about to ask her what her question was. It was the dipping. It was the dipping. dipping. We got, we got there. We are tangent rich. <laughs> tangents to the moon. Hi. Hi. My name is Melissa. My question is mainly for Adam. What? What's up? So, are you planning on doing any cardigan videos this weekend with any other actors? Can I suggest Matt or Mark? Well, no, you can't suggest him. Because, uh... Because you don't do nine finger cardigans? Yeah, exactly. You have to have at least ten fingers to be in my videos. Uh, that's not true. Uh -huh. uh, <laughs> we accept people with all number of fingers. Um, <laughs> He's just playing optics, right? Where are the optics? I hate the nine fingered people. Uh, those nine fingers. Uh, I hope somebody comes up to you and nine fingers. How dare you? Who gets in your face? My mother had nine fingers. I'm right behind that person going, pointing with this three quarter <laughs> finger that I have left right at you. Um, yeah, no, I'm always trying to get a video to happen uh, during the show, but honestly, it's. it's if when it happens, it's usually spontaneous. It's because like we come up with a good idea in the moment, people are there to do it, there's a time to do it, and then it happens. So it'll happen for sure at some point. If not this time, next time, we're gonna make it happen. Not with me. And, and just not with him, you know? Just not with Matt. Like you do all these, these I can't have somebody look better than me in the car again, okay? No, but you need a person to get injured for you to react to. I'm that person. I, I made that Jensen already. I, I, uh, yeah. That was a bad selection for you because I, I know now I've ruined the cardigan for myself, and, and no one can. Everyone goes, "That's not how a cardigan." He put on. Though. He put on the cardigan. The cardigan literally had an orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> know, the cardigan hasn't stopped talking about it ever since. And yeah. the cardigan has smelled literally like heaven since he put it on. Like, Fragrance Heaven by yeah. John Tornopoulos. Like, him down. Yeah, that's why I stopped watching it. I just completely stopped watching it. That's not true. <laughs> uh, again, optics. It's very smelly. No. <laughs> Hello! Hi, guys. Hi. I'm Mars. Hi. So, to preface my question, have um, either of you seen Deadpool 4? Yes. Yes. Okay, yes. No. Now, anyone who hasn't seen it, no major stories, spoilers, or anything. But in the movie, and you will know what I'm talking about, fight scene involving a vehicle and an amazing soundtrack. So my question for you two is if you guys were in a fight, what auto car would you like your fight to be in? And what would your choice of song be for the soundtrack? Ooh. All these thinking questions. This is a lot. Uh, what kind of car and what kind of music is your action sequence? Let's see. Gosh, I don't know. Man, like a Nissan Altima? <laughs> Music is probably, uh, I don't know, like Michael Jackson's Beat It or something? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm not sure. Or maybe Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. <laughs> right? That's pretty good. I feel like, wait, was that song in Deadpool and Wolverine? Don't Stop Me Now? I don't know. Maybe I'm making that up. Maybe I just wish there was. Uh, <clears throat> what about you? Has anybody seen the movie Cars, the animated movie? <laughs> We're all human. There's yeah. two of my favorite Cars characters in that, Guido and Luigi. I would be in one of those tiny little vehicles, right? <laughs> and that song would be playing from Wizard of Oz and the Witches by the Night. And then it would be a mashup with the cops theme. It'd be like, a bad boy, bad boy. And they finally pull me over, and then I have to get out of the front of the car, right? Because it's just one door like this. You're like, oh, hi. And so they're like, you're a lot bigger than we thought in the car. 
I feel like the infection in your finger has gone to your brain. <laughs> what are you talking about? Don't blame my finger. <laughs> blame your non-alert door shutter. <laughs> Damn it. My finger's fine, and I will be a hand model, okay? <laughs> I ruined your hand modeling career. I'm sorry, my hands are just like uh, My dad one time watched me on an episode of General Hospital, and I was doing one of these cheap actor moves where I'm like, I can't remember my lines, I'll just touch my face a lot. And, like, uh. <laughs> and my dad Weird lines written on your hand. As you're <laughs> no lie, yes, I yeah. have done that. There were times on, on General Hospital where I had to oh, I was a neurosurgeon. Marie. Know all this neuro talk, which let's be honest, I don't do big words well. And I was also a priest, so I'm like, oh, you're dying of this, that, and the other thing, and also here's your last rites. And this is too much for me to remember, so you'll see me like this. I pour like some holy oil on their hand, and I'm like, <sighs> and I just pretend I'm staring off into nothing, but my it's my hand, I'm just reading my whole hand. And the director's cool with it. The, the like motto in a soap opera is as long as the camera doesn't fall over, one take and we're moving on. Oh, man. Yeah. So, uh, wait, where was I going with this? I don't know. Was, it, was, it was there a question? <laughs> it's okay. I don't even know where I am. It's the finger in the back of my head. It's alright. We're going to get through this together. I'm so overwhelmed. Hi, how are you? Hello. I'm Nana. Hi. I know the two of you don't remember me from Austin. You don't know that. I can't see, so... Actually, after this. Wait! Now! You don't remember? The whole thing, which you... Right, and you were like, wait! The bush? Guys, I have the memory of a goldfish. I go, how old's your 
Ja. <laughs> she, dead serious without messing a beat, goes, 15. <laughs> What's your phone? <laughs> but my purpose in the moment was to get out of the situation, and I thought, oh, I'll just like give her a free phone number and she can get Does this story end with you in jail? <laughs> Still been a bit of 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 Hands me, never met the guy in my life, hands me a martini, vodka martini, just a martini glass full of like six ounces of, of liquor, and he goes, shots, and cheers the martini with me, drinks the whole martini, and then I go, oh, and I drink the whole martini, walk directly outside of the car, throw up and go home. <laughs> I was in the after party for 20 minutes. 